There's nothing quite like killing God in the morning. Don't worry, little bug. You may be struggling now, but we'll go painfully in-depth into every part of this fight so that even you can't mess it up. Absolute Radiance, or Absrad, is probably the hardest boss in Hollow Knight for any sane person. The chaotic patterns of Oblobbles, the floorlessness of Ascended Markoth, the speed of Nightmare King Grimm. This moth is a real bastard. Let's break down the basics and then extrapolate each section of the fight, followed by specific tips for Radiant at the end. Most people would say that there are six phases to this fight, though to me it really feels more like three sections with different parts. But we don't have time for semantics. For charms, I'd recommend Unbreakable Strength for maximum nail damage, Quick Slash for flurries of attacks and faster upslashes while jumping, Shaman Stone for the strongest spells, which we'll be using a lot of, Steady Body to avoid getting knocked off platforms with your attacks, and Grub Song so that you'll almost always have soul after inevitably getting hit. There is some room for adjustment here though. If you aren't Getting the most out of Quick Slash, you can try Mark of Pride so Absarad is easier to hit and poke off of. Or Quick Focus if you want to be more defensive and heal more often. Grub Song could be Nail Master's Glory if you like nail arts. If you don't like to cast spells, you can replace Shaman Stone. Or Steady Body and Grub Song could be Spell Twister. You get the idea. This is what I recommend, but you can adjust it based on your personal preferences. More than anything, you need to focus on playing slowly and defensively against Absarad. Groundbreaking tech, I know. She's more like a platforming challenge than a traditional boss fight, so you need to learn the attack patterns and get used to dodging them. We'll go into specifics a bit later. Don't greed and go for unsafe attacks for a tiny bit of damage. Focus on dodging first and damage second. This is a battle of bug attrition. Bug -trition. There are even audio cues for attacks, so if the battle music is too loud or stressing you out during the fight, go into your settings and just turn it down. Spells are your best friend in this fight. Abyss Shriek and Descending Dark are especially useful for their high damage to help you move quickly through different phases, and Descending Dark's invulnerability frames can carry you through difficult sections of the fight. Remember, when in doubt, Descending Dark. But out of all this stuff, the most important thing is to just take your time. This fight is long and difficult. Trying to rush through it will be your downfall. With that out of the way, let's move on to the phases. Get used to seeing this opening cutscene. Phase 1 is the learning stage. There are a lot of different attack patterns to avoid, so let's go through them all. The sword wall can come in from either direction, though I find it comes from the right more often than the left. You want to walk away from the swords and look for openings to dash through the safe spots in the walls. You can shade dash through the swords, but there are three waves, so you'll only get that chance for one of them. If you get a good pattern with a safe spot along the ground, you have time to heal. Unless the radiance is right on top of you, focus on dodging the swords and then retain. This attack is easy to accidentally fall victim to if you aren't careful as Absrad teleports away from you. You can also use spells to hover in the safe spots or Descending Dark to iframe it, but that often feels like a waste of soul. Next is the Sword Rain, where swords fall from the ceiling. Like the Sword Wall, you're better to prioritize dodging the swords and get back to attacking Absrad afterwards. Dashing during this attack is dangerous. You're more likely to dash into another sword than you are to avoid the one you may be dashing away from. But if you watch carefully, you should have enough base movement speed to walk between them. And you can stand between the grouped swords, but the spacing is tight and not really worth the risk. Try your best not to get caught by a row of four swords because that's the hardest to move away from. And when in doubt, Descending Dark. Next we have the Wall of Light, which moves horizontally like the Wall of Swords, but this needs to be shade dashed through or de-darked through. It can also sometimes overlap with other attacks. If you've spent your shade dash, you usually have time to move away from it for long enough that your dash can recharge. If there are other hazards around, you have to decide if you can do so safely or if you need to avoid it all with Descending Dark. Feeling overwhelmed yet? Because we're only halfway. The Sword Burst attack involves Absrad summoning a circle of swords to fire at you twice. They don't start moving until they're all summoned, so you have a second to step out of their trajectory like you would against Gorb's spears. Then sidestep the next set by moving into the trajectory of the first swords. It's a good time to Howling Shriek at her after this attack before she teleports. Then the Beam Burst attack involves three waves of beams firing from the Radiance. Each wave is offset from the other. The telegraph is short, so you really need to move to get out of the way of this attack. It's a little easier from further away, and although each wave is offset from the other, they aren't perfect. The last wave won't be in quite the same place as the first. Descending Dark 
can help you get through this attack if the patterns are bad. But you have to be prepared for it because of the slight delay at the beginning of the D-Dark animation. And like the sword burst, a howling shriek is perfect for the end of this attack. You can also do jumping nail slashes during this attack if you can predict the pattern accurately, but it's safer to simply wait. Finally, we have the worst attack of all. The attack that will likely eat away most of your masks and end many attempts. The orbs. Fuck these orbs. Abstract summons four orbs sequentially that track you like a goddamn homing missile. The orbs despawn after a few seconds when they hit a surface or when you shade dash through them. However, they are immune to surfaces for the first second, which can make them very tricky. And they will loop around two or even three times to try and hit you before they're gone. Your best bet is to lure them into the floor, but that's easier said than done, and they often spawn almost on top of you. It requires a lot of precise movement. I'd recommend dodging the first two normally and trying to descending dark through the rest. Bonus points if you're below Abstrad to actually damage her with the D-Dark as well. If you haven't noticed, D-Dark is key to getting through this fight with ease. That covers the gist of this phase, and these attacks persist into later phases, so learning how to avoid them is what will lead to success. It basically needs to become muscle memory. Most of these attacks are white or orangey yellow, and the background is light orangey yellow, so it's super easy to see everything coming. I recommend jumping into the fight in God Home and practicing just dodging without even attacking back so you can get the hang of it. Don't try to practice Abzrad by doing the whole pantheon, you monster. Now let's talk more about offense. When she first appears, the Radiance doesn't do much, so you can get in a flurry of attacks. I like doing a big jump and then down slash left down, then up slashes as you fall. Keeps it somewhat simple without any crazy nail turnarounds. And you can get back to safety before the first attacks begin, but you still get some decent damage and soul buildup for those upcoming shrieks and D-Darks. Generally, you're going to jump at the Radiance and do two up slashes between attacks. If you get too greedy with this, you will get hit. And try fitting in shrieks and safe moments after attacks. They do a ton of damage to Abzrad and can move you through phase very quickly since she doesn't get knocked around like other enemies do. Speaking of phases, phase two or 1B is just like phase one, except now the floor has spikes. The spikes are well telegraphed and once they appear, they can actually be removed with descending dark. It's ideal to use descending dark to remove the spikes and dodge a problematic attack. But sometimes you may just want to wait on the safe half of the floor for the radiance to teleport over to you. The spikes will have to appear to be removed. If you de-dark while they're still being telegraphed in the ground, they won't disappear. And while they're up, you can nail bounce on them. You'll likely make it to this phase many times. Once the spikes start appearing, try to prioritize a few abyss shrieks to push to the next phase as fast as possible. In phase three, one C, if you ask me, spikes appear at both sides of the stage that cannot be removed. The radiance centers herself on the stage and swords begin continuously raining down from the sky. I've seen some people suggest having some soul saved up for this phase to fire off a few shrieks and basically skip this phase, but I have the opposite approach. I think that this is the easiest phase, so we should take advantage of it. So using your soul to actually get to this phase quickly, then simply jumping between swords and doing single slashes lets you safely finish this phase with a near full soul gauge, so that you can heal afterward or have a ton of soul saved up for the next much harder phase. It's up to you if you'd like to end this phase slowly with a lot of soul or skip it with Howling Shrieks. And if you aren't sure why I keep calling Abyss Shriek Howling Shriek, it started as an accident but is now kind of a meme on the channel. We even have t-shirts that you can get in my online store along with other Hollow Knight and gaming merch. 5% off with the code YouTube Viewer for the next two months at checkout. And YouTube channel members also get their own discount codes at certain tiers. And here we are. You've made it to phase four. Two. <coughs> Sorry. This time, Absolute Radiance flies too high for a nice, comfy floor, so you have to suffer. The lack of footing is what makes this phase so difficult. All while trying to deal with the same bullshit attacks from the first few phases. I don't recommend chasing Abstrad around the arena in this phase. It's easy to be caught by a stray beam, and she teleports often. Dodging the orbs is especially hard here, and you need to use the platforms as a makeshift shield. Keep to the middle platforms and wait for her to come to you. You can spam a lot of upslashes on these platforms, but be ready for her attacks. An early descending dark can deal some decent damage and let you position well during the first part of a sword or beam burst. Then you can use Howling Shriek on her after an attack or during a safe attack like a sword wall. Shriek is also great if she appears on a platform above you. Oftentimes though, the safest thing to do is just spam D-Darks. It's also worth noting that falling off stage will only deal one mask's worth of damage as opposed to the two damage from any of her attacks. So sometimes falling to your death can actually be advantageous. And this goes for all phases, not just this one. When killing yourself is better than fighting normally, am I right? Did I mention there's no floor in this part? It gives me horrible Markoth flashbacks. If you manage to deal enough damage in phase four, 750 to be exact, 
Note that that's about 6 streaks, 9 D-Darks, or 23 nail hits. You do the math on the best way through that phase. You get to move on to the climb. A harrowing journey up itty bitty platforms while Abstrad turns on her fully automatic beam firing setting. There are two main ways to do this platforming section. Try to climb as vertically as possible between the platforms to get up quickly, making micro adjustments to dodge, or jump out horizontally from the platforms and dash back onto them in hopes that it draws the Radiance's attack away from you. I personally prefer the latter, but if you want to climb staring down the barrel of the Radiance's beam cannon, that is your prerogative. This part takes some practice, which is difficult because it's so late in the fight. You have to get familiar with the timing of the lasers and try to line up your jumps so that the hitbox of the beams comes out at the beginning of your jump while you have the most control over your movement. Then you can be falling onto the platform while there are no active hitboxes. If you're falling and you end up in the path of an active beam hitbox, it is much harder to avoid. Using Monarch Wings as a way to hold position and time out the attack is a great way to help avoid them. This portion is slightly time sensitive as the void comes up underneath you, but you have enough of a margin of error to climb back up if you fall down a platform or two so long as you don't panic. Like the other phases, if you take it slowly and methodically, you'll reach the top no problem. Consistency is key. Now that you've ascended higher than even Gorb could dream, you're on to the final phase. Which is also relatively easy since there's a small exploit we can take advantage of. In this phase, there are two small platforms and the Radiance will teleport around as bug-seeking orbs spawn one after another. But those orbs despawn off-screen, so if you poco on top of the Radiance's stupid moth head, you can basically completely ignore the orbs. Now keep in mind she teleports. Nothing is worse than thinking you'll get a pogo only to fall to your doom, maybe eating a terrible orb in your sensitive bug bits on the way down. I find that she sticks in one spot long enough for about two nail bounces. After that, you can do a double jump while she teleports and then dash toward wherever she moves to. This is harder if she moves from one side of the stage to the other. The best practice is to get that last pogo right before she teleports so you can also use your double jump to move toward her, but this takes practice. You can at least double jump toward the center to hedge your bets and then dash either direction. If you do fall, do your best to avoid the orbs and land on one of the platforms, but you'll almost surely panic and waste your movement options and fall into the blast zone. If an opportunity presents itself, you can also shriek, but it only takes about 10 nail hits to get through this phase, so if you focus on avoiding the orbs offstage, this should be no problem. Now, for those masochists that want to do this on Radiant, I did it, and I hate myself, but honestly, there isn't much different from the normal fight. Overcharm by replacing Grub Song with Soul Eater so you can focus on skipping phases with spells. I recommend practicing this fight on the normal difficulty just without healing so you can get comfortable with each phase slowly and you have a larger margin of error. Once you've taken the time to learn all the patterns, you can focus on gathering soul with your nail and taking every opportunity to whittle Abzrad down with spells. Phase 4 especially is extremely tough on Radiant, so you need to be very good at weaving Abyss Shrieks between her attacks while she's close, and making the most of her coming onto platforms by dodging with Descending Dark and spamming up slashes while it's safe. That's really it. Otherwise, follow the tips in the rest of the video since her actual patterns don't change. This one is just a grind, but by the time you can comfortably do the fight normally, doing it hitless is less of a jump than you'd think. And say it with me, when in doubt, d Descending Dark. Very good. Absolute Radiance is probably the most difficult encounter in Hollow Knight, so once you've beaten it, you're in the big leagues like the rest of us. Grinding a tough boss can feel grueling sometimes, and that opening sequence is infuriatingly long, so don't be afraid to take a break when you're getting frustrated. Walking away and letting your mind solidify what you've been practicing can make a huge difference. Do your best to have fun with it, except on Radiant. That's for people that hate themselves like me. But if you want to hate yourself less, my Radiant How-To series is all wrapped up now. You can find them in a playlist in the link in the description if you need help with any other Radiant fights. And if you want to support the channel, you can do so by checking out the online store in the description or becoming a channel member. But honestly, watching, liking the video, and hitting that notification bell might be a tired trope, but it really does help. We also stream on occasion, and the best way to stay up to date is with the community tab. Good luck out there, fellow bugs of Hallownest. I'll see you in the next one.